Hi, and welcome to Debunk File. My name is Sep, and today we're going to be making our update to post content. And before this video starts, we want to welcome you to Debunktober. 31 days of scares, chills, and of course, Debunk File. We will have a lot more videos coming out this month, and of course, our Halloween special on the 31st. Make sure to stick around this October for the spookiest mysteries we can find. <laughs> Sorry, got carried away. Anyways, back to the video. Now, if you aren't already familiar with post content, you're gonna have to check out our previous video before this one. It was a very long video, so we wouldn't be able to summarize everything here for you, even though we're gonna try. So again, if you haven't seen our previous video, please check it out. We'll be waiting. Now, from what I've been hearing, post content finally appears to have ended. At the time of our first video, I actually thought the final video we covered back there would end up being the finale. But of course, I was wrong. This is definitely one of the better ARGs I've come across since we started this channel, so being able to talk about it again is just great and perfect for Debunktober. So if you guys remember, we left off with an incredible video titled Solution, and in this video we saw him sit himself in a chair, we saw a body bag fly up, we saw him appear outside finally, and when he returned, there was a mannequin sitting in the chair, which presumably was the one that used to have the body bag over it. This video at the time almost confirmed to us the fact that this series was highly metaphorical. We concluded that the tied up body bag represented him feeling tied up and trapped, and seemed to represent the negative side of him, and the various creatures throughout the videos represented his inner demon slash anxieties, despite the common perception at the time being the fact that he was a murderer making tutorials. But with the series having made some way more since then, maybe our theory was completely wrong. Is he actually a murderer? Is what we thought last time completely wrong? That's what we're here today to find out. We will analyze each of the remaining videos and ultimately come up with a conclusion as to what post content is truly about. After the video solution, we finally got another tutorial style video called DIY Body Disposal. And yeah, the title is pretty self-explanatory. He gives you a complete rundown on what must be done when disposing of a body. Now, when venturing into the comments section, the popular theory of him being a murderer returned and for good reason, but when you think about it, that's still just not the case. This is clearly the body we saw from the previous video, and this is a metaphorical representation of him getting rid of his previous self, aka starting over. The following video is titled Update, and in this video we see that he seems to be done because his tutorials seem to be working better than expected. We had this theory going on that the house represents his mind and its collapse, and as you can see in this video, it's almost completely destroyed. This theory seems to have some merit, as our character quickly shows us that he wasn't being truthful. It's unclear if he's seeing his demons anymore, but he's definitely still not doing it at all, and asks if there's anyone that can help him. In the description, stuff gets interesting. He says, I have no one to talk to except myself, and links a video. This video takes place inside the body bag where we hear struggling and eventually screaming. This ends with the main character saying that everything is alright and they'll get some help real soon. She said she'll be my friend. So yeah, once again, it definitely seems to me that this isn't an actual person. It's still metaphorical. This linked video was on a channel called Easy Go Solutions, and delving into the catacombs of this channel yields some very intriguing results. The first video on this channel is titled, Easy Go Solutions is Rebranding, and in this video we see a woman ride up with a covered face whispering. It's impossible to make out what she is saying, but lucky for us, the subtitle Save the Day. In this video, she says, Sup fam, Easy Go Solutions here. The internet is a magical place and it shall aid you to your path of self-improvement, but you can't do it alone. That's why you're watching this PSA. We here at Easy Go Solutions are excited to announce that we will be dabbing on the competition by rebranding into your only true friend. 
with complete access to all your deepest secrets. So how does this work? Well, this is the internet, baby. I'm already in your head. After saying all that, we are left with a blue screen telling us to leave our deeper secrets, linking an email to share those secrets. Now, since I didn't see all these videos directly when they came out, I'm going to attempt to put the post content and EasyGo Solutions videos in chronological order. So if I made a mistake, please let me know. Anyways, back on the main channel, we have unboxing weird package I found on my doorstep. In this video, we see a package at his doorstep with the EasyGo Solutions logo on it. Upon opening the box, he sees his phone that he previously destroyed. Even stranger, the bottom section of the box says, Need control? Just toss it in the box. When he lifts that section of the box up, it looks like the box is bottomless. Back on the EasyGo Solutions channel, we have viewer testimonials, where they basically took the submitted secrets they received and displayed them. The description, however, is where it gets very interesting. Titled, Subject 1 Exchange, this video sees the main character watching that video where the body bag shows his conflicting thoughts. He wants to give the lady a chance, but he has conflicting thoughts about her as he isn't too sure about change. And this conflicting thought is represented by the body bag. Don't say that. She seems... nice. Problems breathing. Change doesn't always have to be a bad thing, you know. If you couldn't tell, the EasyGo Solutions channel has a ton of unlisted videos, most of which I found on a playlist and from my searching, I didn't find some of these linked on other videos like the aforementioned ones. I don't know if he edited descriptions or if these videos were public in the past, but I still want to go over every single video. With that being said, I want to quickly say that an unlisted video was released before the viewer testimonials and Subject 1 Exchange. This video was titled Subject 1 Interior Self Care. This is another video from inside the body bag and in this one, we hear him talking about how he's conditioned to keep his emotions to himself. Feeling really overwhelmed, but too uncomfortable to express it because I've been conditioned to keep those feelings to myself. He then says that his feelings should be respected and he should listen to them. After his tangent, he laughs at himself and says, What are you talking about? I should respect and listen to them. Self-care is difficult, but acknowledging your problems and communicating them is a big step in the right direction. <laughs> what are you talking about? The following video, which is also an enlisted one and is titled Subject to Argument, and it starts off with him wondering what to do for his next video. In doing this, he, like the title suggests, talks to himself and gets into an argument with himself. Got any ideas? Take a break. What was that? I'm not sure your surroundings are helping you out mentally right now. Maybe you should hey, just- shut up. I like it here. I like it here. Why do you want to make videos anyway? It's not like your viewers are very deserving. What are you talking about? I have a wonderful audience. Returning back to the main channel, we have Q&A with post content. He starts this one off in a peculiar way as he points out that outside has gotten overgrown. Now we know that this series is incredibly metaphorical, so I don't see him just mentioning this without there being some sort of significance. I don't know, am I looking too deep into this, or does it really mean something? Anyways, what follows is a fairly standard Q&A, albeit with a strange few moments. He was asked about the videos in the description, and when he looked, he saw nothing. He also mentioned sleeping on the moldy floor, which makes me wonder why he switched from only being upstairs to only being downstairs. He says it's because the stairs are obviously facing the wrong way, but that just seems like a strange excuse, especially with him not showing it. In the description, we have another unlisted video going back to EasyGo Solutions. This one titled, Happiness Promo V3.1. And I kid you not, it's a dancing noose. Uh, yeah, I don't exactly know what else to say about this one. The next video is titled, Sleep Paralysis where while he's sleeping, he sees that demon that was in some of the old videos. In the description, we have Subject 1 Process. It begins with some Nosferatu-looking hands moving its fingers, which was a demon that appeared in some of the older videos, and he goes up to it and does the same. He then rips the hand clean off and throws it in a box. 
I took this as him overcoming a demon with the help of this box. We then have taking a peek outside ASMR, where he does exactly that. We get to see the exterior of his house and how beat up it is, and the tension also gradually rises throughout this video with its ominous sound effects, all culminating in a chair flying over by itself. Per usual, the description again has a video, this one being called Subject 1 Epiphany, and wow, that's Nexpo's voice! Yeah, apparently the main character of this series watched Nexpo's video. In particular, it highlights the part where he says that the demon is a paper mache mask, where he then goes up to that demon which is lying on the floor, where he picks up the head, and what do you know, Nexpo is right. My dude, that's clearly a paper mache mask. When he turns back, the body of the demon is gone. He puts the head in the box, and with the body gone, I'm assuming he got over this demon too. After this, we have a dream I had, where in the description, he says that he didn't know it was possible to record one's dreams, and that he's not comfortable with this. But at the same time, he doesn't have anything else better to do this week. In the dream, we see him on the floor with a demon gazing down upon him. It eventually walks right up to him and just stares at him with its blank face. A face that's a little familiar. Yeah, that's the same face of the girl in the first Easy Go Solutions video. That's the girl on the bike. The video in the description is titled Subject 1 Courage, which shows the mask of another demon that we've seen before. Once again, he takes it and puts it in the box, and with the video being titled Courage, it's very clear that he's really starting to overcome all his demons. I got a fan letter is the video that follows this. It's a long letter, but in short, it's a secret admirer that writes in a kind of cryptic way. As the video ends, you can tell that he really appreciated the letter. <sighs> that was, uh, that was so sweet, really sweet. Um, We then have subject two, futile reminder, where we're back in the point of view of the body bag. In the body bag, we can see that it is escaping. This to me shows that his negative thoughts are starting to flood back. The past few videos showed that he was conquering his demons, but with this video, I predict that that will all soon change. The following video is called YouTube Life Hacks, Not Clickbait, and I gotta say, I actually had no idea about some of these hacks that they displayed, and the scrubbing one especially is legitimately very useful. It does get a little creepy though, as towards the end of the video it says we are unstable, and the video starts glitching, and the music starts distorting. But yeah, in conclusion, this video definitely was not clickbait, those actually were some useful tips. Subject 1 instability follows, and this is a video that comes off as very important to me, despite being so short. It starts with our main character fixing something, then the video just goes nuts. There's a moment where it distorts with the text showing up for a split second and it says link status unstable, friend mode on. It's a little unclear as to what this means so far, but it's definitely extremely significant. So far, I think EasyGo Solutions has something to do with this, but I don't know what. Now this was a while back, but if you remember, one of the very first videos ever in this series had Easy Go Solutions in the title. It was a video rip where it shows calming footage with its own voice talking in it, and it seems that he has re-uploaded it, but with some major changes. His voice is now buried under some really creepy sounds, but the description is by far the most interesting part. In the descriptions, it says that it doesn't speak to him anymore, and that it used to sound like his own voice, or his thoughts. This clearly signifies to me that his thoughts were being recorded without his knowledge by EasyGo Solutions. In the description, we have Don't Listen to Him, which has very hard to understand audio. A minute into the video, there is a very quick message that displays, and when translated, it says, Please just believe me, this is authentic. No one, especially not him, would ever question the authority of this program. Just don't believe what you're hearing. He's the only one I have, so if this fails, I won't have anyone left. I'm sharing this with you to help you see the full potential of the easy link. The least you can do for me is put your trust in the program. Oh my lord, that was baffling. This confirms the suspicions that I was having. EasyGo Solutions has a program installed in our main character. It's still not known exactly what it does, but it is able to record his thoughts. One question I do have though is who was speaking there? 
This person mentions that he's the only one they have left, and if this fails, they won't have anyone left. Why won't this person have anyone left? Who even is it? I guess time will tell. In this next video, we can see that the distortion on the Easy Go Solutions videos are starting to get pretty bad. So bad, in fact, that even the title is slightly out of order. In its correct form, this video is called DIY Problem Disposal Subject 1 Issue. This video naturally is about the box that helps him get rid of his problems, and in this one, we see that the body bag has drawn on the walls. In the link description video, we see that our main character actually put the body bag in the box, and it's just all black ending the video. With the body bag seemingly representing his negative thoughts, it's going to be really interesting to see how he is from here on out. The next video, food tutorial, takes place in the pitch black darkness of the night, where he finally goes upstairs, and there's nothing there. He goes back down and eventually makes his way outside, where he stumbles across a noose. The end of the noose leads him to a chair that fell over a while back, which leads him to a stack of hay, which has some cabbage on it. He proclaims, I'm so hungry, and proceeds to eat it. This video also has an interesting description, with it saying, If anyone touches the description without my permission, I'm serious, don't you dare. This to me shows that Easy Ego Solutions is also in complete control of his YouTube channel, and most likely everything else tech related. The next Easy Ego Solutions video is titled, New Scary Condition Afflicts Up and Coming Social Media Personalities, where the video then proceeds to only show our titular character in his lowest moments. It says it may have a solution and tells us to visit easygosolutions.com. Naturally, I had to visit the site. In it, we have a page that says, Feeling bad? All your teeth falling out? We may have the answer. After showing some symptoms at the bottom of the page, it says, What's the cure, you ask? It's easy. Just subject yourself to the EasyGo Solutions brand new EasyLink technology. Oh, what's that? You already hooked up, but the symptoms persist? Keep sharing yourself with us, and we promise your symptoms will be alleviated. This message comes off to me as a little creepy. It aggressively begs you to subject yourself to their strange technology, a technology we know nothing about, and one that seems to not even be helping the problems it's supposed to cure, a technology that our main character has undoubtedly subjected himself to. There's another message though, precisely 21 seconds in, there is a message that flashes by incredibly fast, giving us a link to a blog spot by the name of Sophie Miarger. Sorry if I butchered that. Judging by this selfie, this is obviously that faceless woman from the bike. This woman is connected to EasyGo Solutions, and we've seen that she has been working with our main character in some way. Maybe this blog will help us learn more. Yes, it does. There is so much crazy information on here. Let's read some of the posts. The first post I want to highlight is called I Wanna, and in the message she says, You should know I paid your head a visit tonight. It was thrilling. I even showed up in person, face to face. I want to see you, feel you, do all the things I can't do. I want to lie in the dust next to you and inhale your moldy carpet as you tell me your favorite food. I want to sit next to you and look on as you scroll through your Twitter dashboard. Maybe you'll see a tweet from me. I want to observe your YouTube analytics. I want to keep touching your video descriptions. I want to watch the subscribers trickle in as you upload another video. Maybe you'll even let me moderate your comment section? There's nothing I want more than for us to spend eternity online together. Holy crap! So now we know that the one video where he had a nightmare of her showing up, it was actually her visiting him. That really happened. We also get confirmation that she is the one messing with his description. And we see that she really likes him. The next post I want to spotlight is titled, Do Computers Dream? And in this post, she goes on to say, Humans do. Your brain is just a computer made of meat, which means your thoughts are the internet. What happens when you put your computer on sleep mode? Does the internet disappear? Perhaps. Do you die every time you fall asleep? Possibly. But if your thoughts slash dreams slash hope and the World Wide Web are one and the same, then our bond will stay intact no matter how many times you die. So next time you go to sleep, don't think too hard about it. Who knows whether the you you think is you will wake up or not? Who cares? Just keep dreaming. 
I'll be watching. Again, this is some really chilling stuff. She says that our brain is a computer, which means she has access to it even if you die, and then gets all philosophical on us, and it's just really strange overall. The next post I want to show doesn't have a title, but holy moly, this one is insane. Just listen. No, 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 it's a complete misunderstanding. You aren't even supposed to see those links. How did you do that? Did someone tell you? I can't imagine why they would do such a thing. Those links are obviously there for those poor souls who need convincing of the Easy Link's extraordinary capabilities. I don't see why anyone would attempt to spoil that. To ruin our little relationship. To break what we spent so long building up. Believe it or not, I'm feeling pretty confident today, so I think I'll reiterate here. After saying that, she links a picture of the description under his EasyGo Solutions re-upload, where he says that the video doesn't speak to him anymore, but for some reason it used to sound like him, and this absolutely freaks her out. Just listen. This is not true. Nothing changed. It cannot be true. It would mean a huge setback. You've seen his videos, so you know that he's a little wacky. Only the program can help him. Only I can help him. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. It's not like anyone's reading this, right? If you are reading this, I'm not giving you anything else. I've already done too much. You're getting nothing. After that, she proceeds to go full crazy, teasing the reader and seemingly breaking down. For some reason, that video not working on him anymore really freaked her out and I don't know exactly why. The next blog post is another one with no title, and in it she says, I guess I should be happy. This is what EasyGo Solutions wanted. This is what I wanted, right? So why does it feel like something really bad is about to happen? He is feeling good. Is it because of our influence or despite it? Honestly, I should just be glad he's cooperating. If this whole thing fails, I'll have lost my purpose and probably won't get to be around anymore. Manage anymore. But is he cooperating? For a long time now, it seemed that he's slowly figuring things out subconsciously. If this seemingly positive development is in fact temporary, I'll be in trouble. I hate to admit this, but employing Type Zero in order to make him switch again was kind of a last resort. A new iteration would have been key in keeping him under control. But he is under control, right? No worries. Wow, that's another shocking one. So by employing Type 0, whatever that is, she was able to switch his entire thought process and make him happy. If I read that right, that's horrifying. She can literally control everything about him. And that about wraps up the messages on this blog. That was a crazy ride and gave us a crazy amount of lore that expanded a character and made things way more interesting and creepy than before. But it's time to get back to the videos. Alright, finally we're on to the next video, Broadcast Error. And here we see the main character holding a knife, which he stabs into the house, causing the video to wildly distort and say Easy Link Unstable. It seems that he realizes now that he has made a mistake, and is now part of this strange Easy Link test, and is trying to do something about it. The next video here is something I did not expect to see. It's a Let's Play. Yeah, that really came out of the blue, and out of all the games, he plays good old Minesweeper, and uh, he rages really bad. So bad, in fact, that he starts sobbing. What a strange video, but the thing I found by far the most interesting is when you peek at the tabs at the top, the second tab says, is she really my friend? He is, without a doubt, referring to that faceless woman, Sophie. The next video, preliminary interview, is one I find really interesting. In this one, he's being interviewed by what sounds to be an android from EasyGo Solutions, and later gets told what EasyGo Solutions will do, where it becomes clear that this video takes place when he first found out about this company. State your name and age. State your favorite food. Uh, I don't know. Recently, I've been trying more of a healthy diet. It also plays some sound bites later on for him to react to, and one of them freaks him out, but for some reason they play it again, almost as if to torment him. We will play back a series of sound bites. Upon hearing the sound bite, 
You will give us your immediate thoughts regarding it. Fine. Sound bite number one. <sighs> I don't know. What? Do, what do you want me to say? Sound bite number two. Okay, I guess so. Actually, wait, no. Um, could you turn this off, please? I'm not sure I'm uh, comfortable. Oh. <clears throat> Thanks. Right, so... Is that all? Are we done? Almost. Before wrapping up, we should revisit. Sound bite number two. No, 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 no. Don't go back to two. I'm serious. Don't, don't you fucking... All right, we're almost done. The second to last video is called Friend, and it's probably the weirdest video ever. I don't even really know what to say about it. He's just kind of walking around and talking to himself for the entire thing. He mentions not knowing how to greet a friend, and mentions not knowing if Sophie is really his friend again. He mentions offing himself with the noose that is lit up, and then he mentions being happy. The video is literally all over the place, and I don't know what to make of it. But now, let's get on to the final video. What should be the last video right here is called Friend Mode Off. It begins with his old phone flying out of the box, and then this distorted voice starts talking to him, asking what he's been doing. He says he's been talking to his friend, and then it shows that she was never there despite just being there a few seconds ago. What is it that you're watching right now? I'm watching my friend. Take a look. She was never here. Never your friend. Your ignorance fills me with sorrow. <laughs> this causes him to, well, freak out and flee to the woods. And that's when he ends his life. Except, no, he didn't. Despite hanging for a few seconds, he just jumps off and continues walking somehow. He walks back to his house, picks up a bunch of pills, and then throws them on the floor. But then he grabs a knife and stabs through his own stomach. About a minute later, he looks at his hands and stomach, and there's no damage. It's clear that for whatever reason, he is unable to commit suicide. And then he decides to jump into the box. In the pitch black darkness, he just talks to himself. Well, the negative side to himself, I guess. They kind of just start reminiscing until speaking stops and a view actually forms. In this area, the other stuff he threw down here is there. And there's also an entrance at the top. This entrance leads to the house we saw at the beginning of the videos. Upon entering his old room, he sees Sophie, looks down at his arm, and sees cuts everywhere. All of a sudden, the system says, stay, and it shows a dark room, a flickering light, and... What? The system then says, run. It shows those views again. Shows him sitting in a field, where the text pops up, saying, The thing you were looking for, did you find it? And, what the heck, it happened again. The text then says, maybe it's somewhere else with the video, and from what most people assume the series ending with the system saying, subject missing. 
And that is post content for you. So the first time we checked post content, I said it was definitely one of the best ARGs we've ever come across, but now it's legitimately fighting to be the best. These videos were mind blowing. I thought it could have ended way back then, but I'm so glad it continued. But now for the important part, let's make some sense out of all this. Alright, here's where I'm going to explain what I believe this series is about, but before I do that, I want to quickly explain the whole thing that went on with the houses, because after finishing the series, it became clear that I made a mistake. I said before that the house itself was a metaphor for his mind breaking down, but that's not true. The house from the first video all the way to solution is a completely separate house from the house that we see from the video update to now. That doesn't sound too important, but it actually is in the grand scheme of things, so with all that being said, what do I think this series was about? This series to me was about our main character struggling with his personal demons, whether that be severe depression or anxiety or maybe even schizophrenia, although that I'm not sure about. Anyways, this is an incredibly metaphorical series where his inner demons are represented by actual demons that terrorize him. His negative thoughts are also represented by the body bag. Somewhere along the line, he heard of easy go solutions and decided to use them to get help. And boy, was that a mistake. EasyGo Solutions was somehow able to create a simulation where he had no privacy, wasn't able to hurt himself or escape, and they somehow made it to where he didn't know he was even in a simulation for a while. It seems that the first video in this simulation is his update video, where we first see him in the broken down house. Around that time is where EasyGo Solutions was getting talked about a lot more, and it's also when his description started getting edited, so it makes sense that him randomly appearing in this house is where the simulation began. As we see though, he was somehow able to escape the simulation, and that's how the series ends. It seems that he finally made it back home, and that's where we end things. So for this file, honestly, I think I can confidently call it a debunk. I don't really see any other possibilities for what this series was about, especially not their murderer one. Guys, this was an incredible series, and you guys should definitely check it out for yourself. It was an amazing ride. Now of course, as you saw, we got some help from a great YouTuber named CreepyBunnyTV. Thank you so much for helping us out with this video, and guys, definitely check her channel out. She's new to the scene and makes great content. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to spread us by word of mouth. Tell your friends, family, everybody about us. As always, my name is Seth from Debunk File. See you guys next time. Bye.